Hello and welcome back to Functional Analysis. And first, as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Today's part 31 is still about spectral theory. In particular, we will talk about the so-called spectral radius. For this, first please recall that we work in a complex Banner space X and with a bounded linear operator T. There we have already discussed that the spectrum of the operator T is a subset of the complex numbers. Indeed, we have shown it's a closed set. And as usual, we denote the spectrum with sigma of T. Now, the spectral radius just measures how far the spectrum is away from zero. And this is what we denote by R of T. So by definition, simply the supremum of the absolute values. So you see, we can immediately define this number here. And in this video, we will show that this is indeed always a finite number. More concretely, the spectrum is not the empty set and also a bounded set. Okay, now let's formulate it and then prove it. So we have a theorem with the same assumptions as before. Most importantly, we have a bounded linear operator from x to x. Then our first statement is that the spectrum of T as a subset of the complex numbers is a compact set. Please recall in the last video we have already shown that it is a closed set. Therefore the new thing here is that the set is also bounded. Then our next statement here is that the spectrum is never empty. However, this is not completely true because there is one case where this can happen. It happens when you choose the smallest possible vector space. So when the whole vector space is only the zero vector, then there is only one linear map T. And it is always invertible, therefore the spectrum needs to be empty. However, when we exclude this in fairness borrowing case, then the implication is correct, the spectrum of T is non-empty. Okay, then the last part C is about the spectral radius. As I already told you, the spectral radius R of T is given by the supremum, where we go through all the points lambda in the spectrum and we look at the absolute value. Now, one important result here is that instead of calculating a supremum, we can look at a limit. And there we take the operator norm of the powers of T. Then outside of the norm, we take the kth root again. One additional result is that this sequence is monotonically decreasing, so the limit is equal to the infimum. However, most importantly we get the result that the whole spectral radius is bounded by the operator norm of T. Therefore, please always remember, the spectral radius can never be bigger than the operator norm. And this is now something we can immediately prove. For this, let's use the properties we used in the last video. For example, the Neumann series is very helpful here. Therefore, let's take a complex number lambda, which is in the absolute value greater than the operator norm. And now we want to show that this number can't be in the spectrum of T. And in fact, this is immediately given by the Neumann series. It tells us that the identity operator minus an operator S is always invertible if the norm of S is less than 1. And in this case, the inverse that exists is given by this infinite series. And now in our case, of course, instead of s, we take t divided by lambda. By assumption, this operator here has operator norm less than 1. And now you should see, it's a very short way from this to t minus lambda. We just have to multiply this with minus 1 over lambda. In the end, we get a very nice expression for t minus lambda inverse. Of course, the important result is this inverse exists as a bounded linear operator. Moreover, I would say you should also remember this formula here that holds for lambda that are large enough. Okay, now we conclude this lambda here is not in the spectrum, therefore this supremum here is indeed less or equal than the operator norm of t. In addition, this implies that the spectrum of t is bounded. And I already told you, we know from the last video that the set is closed, therefore we have proven A. Additionally, you see that one part of C is also already proven. However, now I want to skip the other parts of C and concentrate on B. Because there we can also use immediately some facts from the last video. So here we can do a proof by contraposition, so let's assume that the spectrum of T is the empty set. No spectrum at all means that the resolvent set is the whole complex plane. 
so rho of t is c. And now you can recall the fact that the resolvent map is an analytic map. More concretely, the map that takes lambda and sends it to t minus lambda inverse can be locally expressed by a Taylor series. This is what we have shown last time and now we can use it. Okay, since you know a lot of functional analysis at this point, it shouldn't be a problem for you when we now use the dual space of Bx. This space of bounded linear operators is a Banach space, therefore it has a well-defined dual space, which I always denote with the prime. Therefore this L is now a linear functional defined on the operators. And of course now I want to apply the L to this operator here. Now you see we get a nice map FL from the resolvent set into C. Because the linear functional L maps into the complex numbers. Also by assumption we know the resolvent set is given by the whole complex plane. So what we have here is a very nice analytic function. An alternative name for this is the notion holomorphic. Therefore now at this point you can use everything you know from complex analysis. Indeed what we get is that FL is a bounded entire function. Here the term entire is not so complicated. It simply means analytic together with the domain C. So the entire complex plane is the domain. And that the function is bounded we can easily show now. Of course there we just have to look what happens for large lambda values. And here for us it turns out that 2 times the operator norm of t is already large enough. Because for these lambdas we can simply use our equation star from above. More concretely let's take fl of lambda in the absolute value. Then by definition this is less or equal than the operator norm of l times the operator norm of t minus lambda inverse. And exactly for this norm we can use our Neumann series here. This means that this is less or equal where we have 1 over the absolute value of lambda in front and then comes the infinite sum of the operator norm of t divided by lambda to the power k. And now by assumption we know this operator here has an operator norm which is less or equal than 1 half. So what remains here is just a geometric series you can calculate. More concretely the value is less or equal than 2. And because we can also estimate this one here, we have our bound. The absolute value of our function fl lambda is simply less or equal than the operator norm of l divided by the operator norm of t. Okay, so this tells us that fl is indeed a bounded entire function. And now from complex analysis, we can apply Liouville's theorem. It tells us that a bounded entire function needs to be a constant function. And please note here, this fact holds no matter which linear functional L we choose. Okay, since we have a constant function, we can simply calculate this constant. We can simply put in one point into the function. And of course, the simplest one would be zero. And there we just have L of t inverse. And now this value is the only value the function can have. Therefore, we have this equality for all complex numbers lambda. Okay, now this is the definition of the function and now I want to put in what we already know of this inverse. As a reminder we often call this inverse simply the resolvent. From the last video we know this is analytic, therefore we can put in the Taylor series we calculated there. And it simply looked like this. Not so complicated because here you see the coefficients and there we have lambda minus lambda zero. And to make it simpler we can just put lambda 0 to 0. So we can simply erase it here. And there. Okay, now this is much nicer and now we can pull in L. And of course then we get our Taylor series for FL. So you see coefficients here and lambda to the power k here. Okay, maybe still a little bit complicated but remember we know the function is constant. Therefore all the coefficients after the term k is equal to 0 will vanish. Therefore for example the term that corresponds to k is equal to 1 is 0. So this means L of t to the power minus 2 is 0. And again as a reminder this fact holds now for all linear functionals. And now every time you see something like this you should immediately think of the hahn banach theorem. And in the case you don't remember it look at part 25 again. It tells us that if we put in the same point into all functionals 
and the result is always zero, then the point has to be zero as well. So for us, this means this operator is the zero operator. However, it's an inverse, therefore this shouldn't happen at all. The only case where this strange thing can happen is if we start with the trivial vector space. And usually we don't do that. Therefore, the result is that in all other interesting cases, especially for infinite dimensional vector spaces, the spectrum of an operator is never empty. Okay, so this was a lot, but I hope you could follow here. In that case, I see you in the next video when we go deeper into the field of spectral theory. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.